measures of center are typically a little more intuitive. They're concepts that we've worked with. They appear in news stories, magazines, articles all the time. So we talk about averages a lot. Spread is something we don't talk about a lot, and these, these concepts are most likely going to be a little more a little new. But we can start with the simplest measure of spread, which is range. Range isn't used very often in more scientific uh, uses, statistical uses, but it's our easiest way to understand how much spread there is in our data. So range is the idea of just taking the largest value in the data set minus the smallest value. So let's say your data ranged from 0 to 125,000. If we're talking about salaries per year, that could be a range. We'd have some people who are at 0 if they're unemployed or not working, and people making somewhere upwards of $125,000 a year, possibly more than that. So range is just that idea. What's the difference between the smallest and the largest numbers? Um, the two, value, or the two measures that we'll focus on more in this class, though, which are used more for statistical reporting and more scientific reporting, are standard deviation and interquartile range. Very unlikely that those are familiar to you, or at least as familiar to you, as the idea of mean and median. Um, but we do have one other measure to include there. So along with standard deviation, we also get the idea of variance. Um, it's very closely tied to standard deviation. So we'll introduce what each of these types of measures are. We'll talk about standard deviation, what that is, interquartile range, or IQR, what those mean. But in both cases, all we're doing is talking about coming up with um, a numerical value, so some number that tells us about how much spread or variability there is in our data. We use standard deviation as our measure of spread any time we use the mean as our measure of center for our data. So again, that's related to skewness. If our data is approximately symmetric or only moderately skewed, we use the mean and standard deviation. We use the interquartile range. Anytime we have to use the median. So whenever our data is highly skewed, we use the median as our measure of center. An interquartile range will give us our measure of variation, our measure of spread. So let's talk first about what standard deviation is. Um, for any set of data, for any set of numbers, any data set, we can find the mean of that data. So that's our center, meaning that every other value in that list is going to deviate from the mean by some amount. So let's say for a set of data, our mean ended up being zero. So maybe we're taking the average of temperatures in the winter or something like that, where our average value would be zero. So other numbers in our data set might be something like three. Maybe there's a day where it got up to three degrees in the middle of a very cold winter. So there is some amount of deviation between our mean, between our center, and that point. In this case, that deviation would be three. So basically just how far is it from the center to this individual data point that we're considering. On another day, we might have had a temperature that hit negative 5. So again, we'd have a deviation, a distance between this particular data value and the average. So the standard deviation In order to calculate it, essentially what we do is we take all of these different deviations. So in this case, a deviation of 3, a deviation of 5, that difference between each data value and the average. So we average all of those different deviations. And that gives us the standard deviation. So we're not going to calculate that by hand. We're going to rely on StatCrunch to take care of that for us. But to give us an idea of where that number comes from, it's just the average of all of these differences between our individual data points and the mean of that data set. So variance, I mentioned, goes along with standard deviation. 
variance to calculate that, we just take the standard deviation and square it. So whatever that number is, we raise it to the second power, multiply it by itself, we just square that value to get the variance. Um, the variance is something that we'll come back into contact with later on when we get into inferential statistics. So we'll mostly just introduce it now. We'll typically talk about standard deviation, but it's good to just see that idea of variance and know that's, that's something that'll come up more in the future. In cases where we have highly skewed data, meaning we'll be using the median as our measure of center, then what we can do is take our data and break it up into quartiles. Or what that means is break it up into fourths. So what we'll do is take all of our data values and break it into different chunks so that we'll have the bottom 25% of all of our data values, the next 25% of our data values, the next 25%, and then the top 25% of all data values. So we take all of our data, break it up into these four groups, and then we can break this or we can measure the different quartiles. So we'll have, for instance, the first quartile, which is the break between the first and the second groups. The second quartile, which is the group between the second and third, or the mark between the second and third. And the third quartile, which is the mark between our third and fourth quartile. So what we want to point out here is that Q2, the second quartile, is exactly the same thing as the median. So the median goes by these two different names. The median is just the center of our data set, if those numbers are aligned from smallest to largest, and that's exactly what the second quartile measures. So those two names or values will be used interchangeably. And then the other thing we can measure, once we have our data broke, broken into these quartiles, we could look at the difference between Q1 and Q3. So if we take the third quartile minus the first quartile, we get the distance between the largest and smallest values in kind of the middle 50% of all of our data. And we call that the IQR, or the inner quartile range. So the inner quartile range is just the difference between the boundary point between our bottom 25% and this middle 50, or the bottom 25%, the middle 50%, and Q3, which is the difference between the top 25% and this middle 50%. So IQR is this middle 50% range of all of our data. And again, if we need to calculate it, it's just the difference between Q3 and Q1. It's something that, again, StatCrunch will calculate for us. StatCrunch can find each of those quartile values. It can find the inner quartile range. But so we have the idea of where that comes from. Now keep in mind whether we're using standard deviation or the interquartile range, even though those are measured differently, larger values always mean more spread. In our next two examples, what we want to do now is calculate the appropriate measure of spread for each of the previous two examples we already looked at. So in example two, we were looking at the data from the Bears points per game. So in variable one here, we already decided that this data was moderately skewed. We could use the mean as the appropriate measure of center. So if we go to stat, summary stats, and then columns, since we use the mean as our measure of center, we can look at the standard deviation as our measure of spread. And we'll go ahead and calculate the variance as well, just to see that relationship between these two. And I have to select a column. So we'll select that first column. So in this case, we get a standard deviation of a little over 13, so about 13.3, and a variance of about 176. So again, keep in mind, variance is just taking the standard deviation and then squaring that. We won't be basing much off the variance for now, but just to see that result. So what we're really interested in is that standard deviation of about 13.3. Since our data set had moderate skew, we use the mean. So we look at the standard deviation as our appropriate measure of spread. 
And in this case, the standard deviation was 13.27. And the variance was 175.996, depending on how we want to round those different values. So now we can look at performing a similar operation. Now with our second data set, in this case, this was again the amount of the possession limit for medicinal marijuana. We saw that this data set was highly skewed. So when we look at variable two, what we'll want to calculate will be Q1, Q3, and the IQR. So the interquartile range is just going to be the difference of Q1 and Q3. But we're going to go ahead and calculate all three of these values, again, just to see that relationship. So our Q1 is 2, Q3 is 6, and the interquartile range, which is the difference of those two, ends up giving us 4. So this data was highly skewed. So we use the median to measure center. So since we're using the median to measure the center, we should use the interquartile range to measure spread. Our value for Q1 ended up being 2. Q2 or Q3, sorry, was 6. And the IQR was 4. So when we have the case where our data was moderately skewed, we look at the standard deviation, or we could look at the variance, but primarily standard deviation. When we have data that's highly skewed, we look at the standard deviation. So it's a difference between whether our data is moderately skewed or symmetric. We use the mean and standard deviation. When our data is highly skewed, then we consider the median and interquartile range.